That fella right there pulled in here. He must have been around, I don't know, this morning. Non-stop. It's like 59 degrees out. Non-stop. High idle. High idle. High idle. No, oh, it's a Swift. That's why. Man. Just don't care. Why the hell do you need to run your truck? we're going across Wyoming. Weather looks good, the roads look good, and the time made up is even better, hopefully. It's supposed to snow on Donner tonight on our team. Hopefully it's not too bad. They're calling for six inches of snow there. Just out of the blue like that. It's supposed to be fine all week though. I'll put my tinfoil hat on. The grass, the, I mean, the cloud seeding, there's nothing to do with that. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, hopefully they get in and out of there though because they're pretty far ahead so if they can get their trailer in and out they could probably avoid all that um, which I think they will and then uh, we're gonna pull out of here in about two minutes and start heading east to Denver gives you an incredible feeling of power. I tell you if you want to know. All right. The greatest feeling of power, okay, is insane park throttle turbo whistle. That's right. Not for them getting two plus feet of snow here in Salt Lake City or whatever the hell they got Monday, Tuesday, sure is gone. A little bit of snow here and there on the shoulders, but there's hardly anything left. It all melted. It's just too damn warm anymore, man. It's too warm. It's like it snows and it melts. It snows and it melts. Get over it, winter. Probably the quietest I've seen Elk Mountain in forever. No wind here. Maybe a slight breeze. Beautiful road. A couple slick spots here and there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna tell you guys something. If you're coming through Wyoming and you're heading eastbound, especially because the wind's always blowing out of the south through there, um, but the around the Creston Junction area, which is the 187, but about the 180 the 200 man just be careful through there because it is so unpredictable lately that the roads will be dry then all of a sudden you're going to come around a curve and it's literally just a sheet of ice there's a truck that lost it there today and i'd like to say oh it's a stupid steering wheel holder no i don't think it was the guy's fault i i think you know we we're trucking along like right here or like we're coming around this corner and you get up over there further up and it was just it was a tighter corner too that he just came out of and he just lost it man you, you can't you can't see in the dark and he wiped out and he was off that in a ditch jackknifed so i feel bad for the guy because i don't think he, there's anything you could have done about it i mean you almost kind of gotta be very you know driving uh what's the word i'm looking for i mean cautious yeah but yeah i don't know It'll come to me you got you, you got to kind of predict the the road conditions on here so far so it's just because there's a lot of snow on the road and you know it's windy here in wyoming so 
it's gonna blow this damn snow across the highway. Now, tomorrow it's supposed to be 60 here, and then next week's supposed to be in the 70s here, and so on. So I believe that throughout this week, this snow's gonna melt, and hopefully you won't have any more of these black ice, freaking ice problems because of the blowing snow and all that junk here in Wyoming anymore. Hopefully, anyway, so. That's the problem, just not the snow because the snow is gone. It, I mean, gone. It's on the ground, but it went away. There, there's no snowstorms or anything like that. It's just the blowing snow with the wind causes the problems. So yeah, anyway, about the 180 to the 200. Always be vigilant through there. Be careful because that seems to be the trouble spot this year for everybody. It's not even Elk Mountain because everybody knows Elk Mountain's bad. Elk Mountain's just you know you got to be ready for it. But over there, it's like well nobody thinks to be careful through there because it's just dry road then all of a sudden it's not but we're what uh, 259 mile marker we're about 50 miles from Laramie we're gonna stop and do a 30 minute break there because we don't have enough time on our clock to get to Denver we're gonna get to Denver probably around 2 3 2, two to 2 30 in the morning and leave Denver and we're gonna go to bed maybe we'll make it back to Laramie I don't know we'll see if we do make it back to Laramie that'd be nice if not then Johnston's Corner it is the only problem is when I get over to Johnston's Corner at 3 4 in the morning there's never any freaking parking there so might have to uh, improvise again but Denver's supposed to be in the 70s tomorrow, so it'd be a nice, nice day to hang out there, I guess. But if we can make some miles, I'd much rather do that. Which is what we're doing now. Save yourself. Or your fleet. Time and money at DriveWise, the nation's number one way station bypass service. DriveWise is an app-based scale bypass service that saves you time and money by giving you bypass opportunities right to your phone or tablet, so there's no need for transponders. Trucking Together viewers can get a no-risk, free, 30-day trial by clicking the link in the description box down below. After the free trial, the cost for DriveWise is only $17.99 per month. You probably spend more on that on a bag of beef jerky at the truck stop. Thank you so much, DriveWise, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to trucking. Well, stayed somewhat clean. We had some ice and stuff that we ran across. So, not too bad. Cleaner than it normally is, though. So, I'll take that. Since we're in Laramie, usually from here on out, it gets drier. But also, with all this snow that's on the ground, everything's just melting. And uh, it's causing runoff on the road. So you're not going to stay too clean. But man, I'll take this. I'll take this all day long over the Mac Chloride of Veil. Even though it keeps the roads open. But it just wrecks the electrical on these trucks. Well, I mean, I like all of it. But the wiring for the lights and stuff. Yeah. Man, I can't believe there's like no wind out here today. It's Wyoming. Like no wind. Hardly any wind. Take that all day long. Oh, man. It's chilly. Because that's sitting still, but... Um, it's not that bad. Freaking load info. It's not that bad. It's like 22, I guess. I'm not sitting still. All right, I think we'll make something to eat. Man, you guys see that? that dude's got his curtains up. <laughs> He's literally sleeping here at the fuel islands. Man, oh man. What is this world coming to with these truck drivers? Holy crap. I can't believe that, man. 
Like, bro is actually sleeping. I mean, what else is he doing in there? Crazy. Man, they got that dinosaur. They got that dinosaur lit. That's really like up here. Anybody want to take a guess where we're at? We made it, and the truck's still home, somewhat clean. It's cleaner than it usually is. I'll take it. It's two. Oh man, what is it? Two forty local time. bad 140 my time i think we're gonna go back to laramie i think we can make laramie with what we got left on our clock it will be about an hour further ahead that number makes me happy because it's one of the new trailers i love the new trailers and we got what fifteen thousand give or take for you guys that want to know or always ask do we ever have over 20,000 pounds in our trailers it happens I think the heaviest load I've ever had here is probably 32,000 that was probably the heaviest load we've ever hauled here um, doesn't happen very often I would say the average is about Right now, it's been around 15, about the average. So, that's about what we do, about 15,000 on average. Sometimes more, sometimes less. I came out here with, what, 11? And now we're leaving with about 15. Now, these weights aren't necessarily perfectly on point. I mean, they might be less, they might be more. Sometimes they're actually more. And I know because I have a suspension gauge and it tells me. So it's just, you know, miscalculations. But we haul air freight. Air freight's light. Being that it's air freight, nice weld job. It's usually fairly light. Now we're stacked and packed, usually top to bottom, front to back, but it's never that heavy.
So we got a trailer. Our clothes are up, seal her up, but get on down the road. Looks like our guys did real good in coming out of California. They missed all the snow They're in Nevada already, so likely they won't have to mess with none of that crap. Well, it's gonna work. Let's go to Seattle. Let's go to Seattle with the 906 trailer, my favorite. The 906s are the brand, brand new ones. The 35s are the newer ones too. 35s, I think there's some 31s maybe, 32s. All newer stuff. Good to me. That's boogie. Don't judge me on the back and up. When we go and bring our inbound trailers, we go to the back and uh the way the docks are and the way the lights, the green and the red lights when they're flashing at you and with the way the lines are painted and you just can't see anything when you're backing up into those things. So I had to kind of, whoops, that's not going to make it, so I had to reposition. Now they start putting our uh, outbound stuff that we leave with inside the gate so it's a song and dance to kind of get it because this, this stepped up security so it's kind of a kind of a pain to deal with but I found out some vital information we have badges like employee type badges and I think those from what I was told they're supposed to work so we can let ourselves in the gates gonna have to try that next week or whatever Get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. 